Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry for the delay. We, we've been in, up in the attic with the structural engineer um, with concerns of the snow and ice up on the roof. Um, <clears throat> the 6.30 meeting is going to start now at 7.15, and it was the agenda was to discuss uh, priorities uh, for town's budget needs, and this is um, the newest priority is the roof. Um, so we have with us the structural engineer, um, and we just came down from the attic, both attics, and uh, so Charles, if you wouldn't mind um, just telling us what, what you <coughs> believe we need to do to correct the issue at Town's Town. Thank you. My name is uh, Charles Sacre, and uh, I was called to come to the, see the building after my previous colleague came and had seen it by Tom Donaldson of the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Agency. Um, so after the, I heard the description, I thought it was something that we need to look at urgently. And I came the same day I heard about it. The, what I observed, uh, and heard also my colleagues explain to me what they think they have observed. It was for us as engineers a way, a second opinion. Let's have a second opinion for internally and offer it to the client. In that case, we are not pursuing the, the work that we have done for the town, but we are representing the insurance company who told us to come, who told me to come and give another opinion. So it's with pleasure and professionalism that I am offering what I observe. First, I thank Helen for all the help and all the help of Steve, Bernard Fivello and the other, Lincoln and others for guiding me through and showing me around. The most important, what I have observed in the space, attic space, over the meeting hall, the, the hall itself. Uh, what we have observed as deflection of the ceiling is real. It is the result of the one of the central trusses that is not carrying the roof per se. It's part of the roof, but it's mainly built to carry the ceiling and the insulation. Well, even if that truss fails, it could bring down the whole ceiling and cause a deterioration of bringing down certain areas of the roof. We looked at the ends of the truss and we saw it's difficult to really touch it. We were, Steve and myself, like uh, cats under the timber trying to figure out what's happening there. It looks like there have been some recent wind, uh, not wind, timber deterioration. We couldn't go closer and look around as we should. Then, <coughs> excuse me, the, that truss is not a typical truss that you see where you see diagonals and vertical elements. You see two timber pieces with a flat timber piece in the middle. If the span is 60 feet, you could say it's divided in three, 20, 20, 20. 20, 20, and 20. With two steel rods or iron rods tying the top, to another piece of timber at the bottom. This is not a truss. A truss would have these, the vertical pieces are called in our terms tension members. That is, if you compress them, they deflect. It's if you compress the steel, it becomes a truss. But if you tear it like that, it remains straight. So this truss at both ends have moved. 
I don't want to enter into the reasons before I open it and look at it from under. That could be, thank you, that could be the cause for the movement that you have witnessed and what you may have heard from timber noises. The other thing that we observed, the roof, what is supporting the roof, are two pieces of timber nailed to a horizontal at the crest of the structure. You notice that this piece is not bonded together to the middle piece of timber. There's some space, so, which means that the nails are not keeping the thing together. Some movement has happened. It doesn't seem to be recent, but it could be some areas appear whiter than others, indicating fresh timber. Mm -hmm. But it could be also <coughs> triggered by that middle truss that moved out of position, and since it carries some load, it could have triggered movement of the roof. What is the reason for that? We have not seen all the facts, but there's something that if we look at probabilities of failure here, it's not something imminent that was likely to happen but it's not certainly not a certainty. So how to limit the probability of failure temporary until a more permanent solution is found? My recommendation would be to shore at four points this middle truss that caused movement and that is deflecting. And if we are shoring it, it's not very heavy loads that we are carrying down to the ground because if you shore it to the lower floor, then the lower floor may not be able to support it. So my recommendation would be this as a first option. That would limit immensely the probability of failure. The second recommendation would be on the roof, it is true that I'm told that there is a foot, a foot and a half. Well, eliminating any additional load would also reduce any risk of failure. So these are the two easy things to do that could be done immediately. We noticed on the ceiling floor, that is, that there are Man, uh, pieces of timber that were added subsequently to the construction. Now, the roof that is being carried is based on different inverted V shapes that are at two or two foot or one foot eight and one foot uh, nine inches, one foot six inches spaces. Um, this system of V under load tends to open. Under when you push, it tends to open. So it must have opened either after the fire or I'm told maybe before the fire, possibly. So what they did, those who looked into a solution to stabilize it, they took a piece of timber at the bottom and nailed it at the ends continuously. So now, if it's trying to fail and keep falling like that, it's not going to be able to do it. So it's a smart solution. This is only on half the roof, on one side of the main truss. On the other side, there is nothing. But still, the phenomenon of opening at the top is visible on the other side. So as a potential addition, we could add the same thing, simple horizontal timber that tie one end to the other. So we stabilize it from opening up further and opening, taking the wall with it. So I think these are three things. The first two could be easily done. And the third one, something to add to also minimize risk on the roof until you other options are looked more in depth in your future planning of the of the home. Okay, so 
Um, so at this point, I think uh, you'll report to, to the insurance company for us, and then we'll have to get uh, a temp you know, the, the temporary fixed design and have somebody, a shoring company, come in and, and get started on it. Uh, Helen told me that Isaac Blair looked at it. Yep. Uh, we, Isaac Blair, uh, do a lot of work to Maya. They are very reliable, very professional. I'll talk to Tom Donaldson, the representative, and I was explaining with Maya, we have had 10 years of experience, almost, I would say, 350 to 400 assignments in these last uh, 10 years. We work extensively sometimes with Isaac Blair. We work with, uh, with other subcontractors. Sometimes we go for mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, fire, uh, and, uh, and sometimes trusses move. I was explaining that uh, the town that is after Sturbridge, uh, the name is skipping me now, they usually make a book uh, or, or a market for old things to be sold. Uh, their town hall. Brimfield. Uh, Brimfield? Brimfield. Brimfield, bravo, yes. The town hall there. Yeah, we investigated it. It's a beautiful town hall. And uh, one of the trusses, main trusses, suddenly went down a few inches and they got scared. It was something scary. So when we investigated that, piece of truss, the timber had rotten at the base, oh. and it fell, but it didn't go down, it was still supported, and when we looked at it, also that it could go down further because other tim pieces of timber were rotten, but what I noticed that the floor of the ceiling, contrary to yours, had a whole, you know, maybe, I don't know how many, I would say, thousands of pounds of books and documents, which was really scary. That was the big danger there, that this could have resulted in a, something very serious, but immediately we did the shoring. We removed the books. Uh, you know, that is, these ceilings are not designed to carry things. They are designed probably for what you have, for a person like me or somebody else, walking between the pieces of timber, on the pieces of timber, rather than on the ceiling itself. And so these things, we deal with these issues, and first thing is securing, limiting potential failure. And I think this is what we can do here until we could find other options. This will allow you to <coughs> feel at peace And as we discussed briefly, um, we did have a shoring contractor here on Friday. Um, there seemed to be a, some conflicting thoughts about the shoring tower, so perhaps you could um, speak directly with the shoring contractor. I will speak with Tom. Okay. And if he wants Isaac Blair, we'll deal with Isaac Blair ourselves. Okay. We'll be our own Beautiful. responsibility. So and we're not carrying the whole building, we are carrying correct. a piece of and how long will that those temporary towers, how much time does that buy us? Months or years or weeks? Oh, oh no, these, you know, they are there, they are solid, they are... Uh, years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> years. <coughs> and you also recommend that we remove the snow from the roof? This is an additional factor yeah. that could help eliminate another risk that could be there. It's unloading but what it would caused help. the thing. So you think it would help? It would help. Because it doesn't look like the snow is going to be melting shortly. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> so Unfortunately. It might be worse. And even if it does melt, you don't want it up there. Right. With the weight of it alone. Yeah. So we, sh we should look into a snow removal uh, roofs, roofers or somebody that can do it. If, if we were to put a timeline on progress towards these temporary measures. When do you think we could hear back from uh, Mr. Donaldson? Oh, uh, Tom? Yeah. I'm going to call him tonight. 
No, Tom uh, is a Tom and Jeeves is I think three hundred pounds and never heard any any Oh, he is if you are worried, he is much more worried than you are. No, he's great. He's yeah. he's very very good to work with. Yeah, and uh, we have in two or ten years with him. And yeah. and, uh, okay. Very good. Well, we thank you very much. I, I appreciate that you came out. Oh, we Robert. have one question, Mr. Bada. What's your opinion about new cracks in the wall? It, it seems to me that this approach is. We're addressing immediate concern, but the, the, the spreading of the walls and the new cracking in the wall is um, pretty disconcerting to me. And I'm wondering if when that thing fell, it might have pushed out on the walls, but there are new vertical cracks in the walls. When I looked outside, I didn't see. Check if they are the walls are bowing the outside. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at it visually, I may not be able to distinguish necessarily a bow of the wall, but I didn't see cracks, and I was specifically looking for cracks because a crack could signal, particularly at the corners. So they think those cracks are sitting on an interior wooden partition, or are they sitting on the brick wall? I think they are sitting on the brick wall. So the long-term solution is a little bit more than dealing with this problem. Yes. I guess that's the point I'm getting at. The pieces of timber that I that are burnt, I touch them. I some of them could crumble even under a touch, you know. But it lasted. I mean. Uh, those who put these horizontal ties, we call them, they put one in the middle of the V and one at the bottom, which was very smart. So they tied it together. It, they prevented the, the V to open up further and create a whole thing. I thought it was very creative, very efficient, and... Uh, Certainly the only reason it's still standing. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Chairman, I just want to point out it's yet to be determined whether the insurance company is covering this, if they will accept it as a claim, or if this is something that they're going to consider part of a pre-existing condition. So I just want the board to be cognizant of the fact that we we do not have certainty yet as to whether this is a covered uh, situation. We'll give them permission to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Nevertheless, it's got to get done Absolutely. for safety reasons. And we will alert the Finance Committee that we may likely be submitting a reserve fund transfer. Yeah. You hear that, Rich? <laughs> 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 All right. Well. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank, you thank you. You want to take a temporary five-minute recess before we open the seven? Or? Sure, we can. If Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you could all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't have any announcements this evening. 
Uh, except there's no blizzard scheduled for this week. Uh, next on the agenda, we have approval of minutes and warrants. Uh, well, just minutes tonight, I think, right? Correct. Um, the minutes for January 20th at 5.30 p.m. The only one absent was John. Motion to accept. Motion to accept the uh, minutes of January 20th. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we have minutes for the January 20th, 20th, 7 p.m. meeting, and John was the only one absent. Mo motion to approve the minutes of January 20th at 7 p.m. So moved, no, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we have town uh, reports of the town officials, which was scheduled to be the planning board, but they asked to table it until our next meeting for uh, carriage to estates. Uh, so next we'll have the first public forum. Nobody. Um, correspondence, uh, Charter TV, um, the only thing I really have is Charter TV changed and added a few channels to our lineup. Uh, so, and if you check your guide channel, you will find them all there. A couple of HD channels and a couple of sporting channels. Um, and that's it for correspondence. Um, next we have appointments and resignations. We had the Green Community Committee. There's two appointments. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to make two appointments to the Green Community Committee. The first one being uh, Keith Boone. Uh, he indicated an interest, and I have an email from him indicating that he would like to participate in green energy. Uh, he's particularly interested in alternative energy sources. Uh, he's a he works for GE. He's a basically a programmer and a field application engineer. So he has a technical background. So I make a motion that uh, we can uh, consider the appointment of Keith Boone. And then the second appointment I have is I also have a, uh, uh, an email from him, and that's Chris Capazzoli. Chris is, um, is an independent businessman. He's a you know, water uh, conditioner and contractor. Uh, he's a bit technical, and he also has an interest in assisting with you know, green energy. Uh, so uh, I, I would ask this board to entertain a motion to uh, appoint these two individuals to the Green Community Committee. Okay. Um, do we have all a second? Right. So moved. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you uh, next, we have the assistant animal control officer. Um, Resignation. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we don't have that in writing. The gentleman did come in and speak one-on-one uh, -on -one with the assistant town clerk and turned in his keys and his um, his equipment. Okay. Um, so it was an implied resignation, unfortunately not in writing. Okay. So I would be seeking um, an acceptance of that from the board. Okay. Accept the resignation of the assistant. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have one comment uh, sure. on that. Um, a gentleman by the name, I happened to be in a police station one day and a gentleman by the name of uh, Jason Berthlet from Berthlet Way indicated that he'd be willing to fill in as if you know, the town needed. Uh, he, he, he's a police officer in the, in the town of Woonsocket. He's a detective on the night shift, but he's available days. And if we need any assistance in that regard, I don't know if the chief would like to comment on that. I did, um, the chief did send that resume over to me, um, I think on Thursday. Um, I just haven't, quite frankly, with the issues with this building, haven't had the opportunity to, to telephone the gentleman and, and speak about the position at all, but um, we will certainly look into that. And um, 
you know, if, if he can't do it on a more permanent basis, we'll, we can post the position again. Um, next, we have an appointment for the police department. Uh, Dear Chairman Barrett, I respectfully request the Millville Board of Selectmen appoint Michael DeRosa as a part-time Millville police officer at the February 17th Selectmen's meeting. Mike is a graduate of the Massachusetts Reserve Police Academy and has, and has his first responder EMT and CPR certifications and will be an asset to this town. Sincerely, Sincerely, Ronald S. Landry, Chief of Police. Motion to. And this is until June, June 30th, 30th of this 15. year. Right, yes. Okay. Um, so, all in favor? I will. Oh. You second? No, you second. You second it? Okay. Any more discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have the license agreement for the new polling location, which which we've been looking into at the um, St. Augustine's Parish. Skipped over Helen. I did. Nothing to say. Did I? <laughs> Nothing I'm going on. You got any? Nothing. Really. <laughs> Nothing, right? I'm sorry. All right, back to the executive secretary. How'd that happen? That's no, always I'm the most exciting <laughs> part of the meeting. Um, of course, the board members are uh, have been kept abreast to the situation via email, uh, but for the public watching and those in the audience, we did have a rather serious situation with the town hall building over the weekend. Um, beginning on Friday, uh, we had no heat uh, in the building, uh, which caused a loss of water to both the, the uh, police department and the town hall because we are on a shared well. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details, but 72 hours later, we do have our heat back on. Water has been restored, and I'm happy to report that we suffered very limited um, damage to the pipes and bursting of the pipes. Um, we've got a couple of very small issues that a plumber will be addressing at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Um, but that is the reason why the building was closed today. Um, the heat just came on later yesterday, so during the thawing process, we didn't know what we were going to be facing as far as pipes bursting. Um, so we've addressed that issue. Um, we did have some issues. Um, I tend to think because of the severity of the temperatures in the building, we had some issues with our server, our main server. We had our IT people come out. Uh, they will be addressing those. Um, there is a part that is needed that will be hopefully replaced this week. Um, so the server, as of right now, is running, but it's kind of a come and go issue. Um, and lastly, as you all know, uh, we've had some concerns about the roof and the ceiling in the, uh, the classroom on the second floor. Um, because we know that there will be some work done up there. Um, we did have all of the historical pictures uh, and items that were in that room relocated within the town hall. Uh, we were in, contract, in contact with the Historical Commission. Um, Ms. Carroll and uh, Mr. Berthelet was good enough to come in and remove his diorama and bring that back to his house to avoid that from any damage. Um, so those are just a few things we've dealt with uh, just this weekend. We appreciate everybody's patience. Um, the chief's been great, Steve. Um, we've had a lot of people helping us out, the officers who checked the building for us. We, we greatly appreciate their assistance. Um, and one other thing, um, the Municipal Center Building Committee, uh, as you know, uh, Mrs. Wing asks often, we do have the final report. A copy of that has been given to all of the selectmen for review. The, um, the committee met last week, and what they decided is before they prepare their final recommendation to the board, they would like to meet with you all briefly uh, and give you the opportunity to ask questions um, and you know hear your comments before they present their final recommendation. So they would like to do that if you're available before the next meeting uh, on March 2nd at 6.30, okay. if that works for you. I'm good. Six thirty on March second. Yep. So if you could, um, you know, take a quick look at that report and just have your questions ready that night, um, they'll be happy to address those for you. And then shortly thereafter, they will come to a meeting and present their final recommendation. Okay. Which, as we know, after tonight is, uh, we need to get that done sooner rather than later. So over the weekend, as I was watching emails going back and forth on the situation here. 
I thought about that. And instead of just taking the questions that night, we'll have the draft recommendations for you to review. Okay. Now, we can't really drag this out much further because it needs to go now. Okay. So we can go there. Yeah. But we'll have those for you. Uh, once your questions are in, we'll make adjustments and get those back. And then from there, we can plot our way ahead. And sure. So it'll be more than just the, the questions that night. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Okay. Uh, and on that note, Helen, after this weekend, I just want to thank you for all, oh, on behalf problem. of the whole town, for every time there's a disaster, it's not in your job description, but you, you grab the reins and, and you, you take control. And um, uh, Renard HVAC, talk to them today. Uh, the gentleman that, and he's, he was very happy with, with all the help and the professionalism from Millville. So um, I just want that to be known that it's most yeah. appreciated. The, the town of Millville is very fortunate in that the vendors we do use are Renault HVAC and um, the plumber in town, Jason Ravitz, um, Richardson Well and Pump. They were all, as soon as we called, they were here. Um, they were all very, very good, very professional and um, came here in a very timely, timely manner unfortunately because our heating system is so old as you know mr barrett it finding parts for it is not an easy task yep. and with the weather saturday it, we were in the middle of a blizzard um but they really they went out of their way to get the parts and they got here and they fixed it as quickly as they could so now we're we're very fortunate so anyway so thank you for all your no, no problem. extra work this weekend and um that's it for that now now to the old business uh, the polling location license agreement. Yep, if the board recalls, um, at one of the last meetings, you did vote to authorize me to um, forward this to the church for their review. This is a, a simple agreement that we asked our town council to draft. Mm -hmm. um, the church representative did sign it. They didn't have any issues or concerns with it. So um, the way town council prepared it is for my signature. Um, so I would just be looking for the, uh, the board's vote to authorize me to sign on behalf of the board um, and once we get this signed we will then start the process of notifying the residents um, that our polling location has changed i've spoken with the town clerk about getting some additional signage that we'll put at the foot of the the drive at the church so people know that the location has changed but that will be for the the uh, first time will be the annual election in april okay so moved Second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? No. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next we have on old business is the goal setting mission statement. Joe? Okay. <coughs> I did receive uh, a statement from uh, Mr. Baker as well as from the chairman. Did you get mine? Yeah, you sent it. Oh, you told over. me. You said you sent it. Yeah, no. Do you have it? I have a copy I can send you all. That's okay. I, uh, I kind of liked uh, what Mr. Baker wrote in that uh, it seems like it's an all-in-one statement. I changed the, the words around a little bit. I'll read it, and I'll, I came early enough. I should have made copies of it to, to, to share with you, but I'll read it and, and send copies electronically. Yeah, we all got it on our emails from Mr. Baker. Okay. You were the same. So you, you reworded a little? So yeah, it, it shall be the goal of the Board of Selectmen to meet town resident needs by ensuring public safety, encouraging recreational and cultural activity, supporting the school district, and focusing resource on commercial development to ensure Millville's future viability while striving for the highest quality of life for all its citizens. I there isn't much that I, I change, but I just try to make it flow a little bit better. And uh, I, I would welcome comments. Um, 
from the board and get a chance to, to, to look at it. I'll send you so. Okay. And hope, hopefully we can finalize it. Uh, I, I think that statement, um, identifies a mission, it has a goal, and it has vision. So we don't have to do anything more. Right. <laughs> except, okay, now, except walk, 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 talk, <laughs> talk, right? <laughs> the, uh, but I think as far as the goal setting process, the, the onerous responsibility we have right now, it's a number one goal, and that's housing the town government. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's it for goal setting. But I also want to uh, compliment the uh, finance committee. Um, they have a set of eight goals, which kind of fits into all of this because it, it, it supports this, this statement as well in terms of the fiscal responsibility and, and the goals that they've established. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So I also, um, I'd like to see, me, obviously not this year, but in future years, um, our mission and our goals be directly reported within the town report. That, that's an excellent point. I, uh, I noticed that uh, Mr. Laura brought along his selectmen's. Um, and it, it, it basically the two things that, that it says is that uh, you, you need to involve all town departments mm -hmm. in, in a goal setting process. And the other thing is to more frequently um, bring in your, your state and local representative for meetings with the board. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this, is a, this is great reading. <laughs> Thank you, John. Next, um, we have uh, new business. We have the uh, overspend the snow budget. So uh, please be advised that, that a vote by the Board of, Health, Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee is required to authorize snow and ice emergency expenditures in excess of appropriation as provided by Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Subsection 31D, as of this date, the account is at a deficit of $47,000, not including the last large storm. And this was dated February 11th. So um, that's something we need to vote on. Too. And the Finance Committee did already vote on this at their last meeting. Yeah, okay. So do we have a motion? Motion, motion to overspend the snow and ice budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Just a comment, is there a rough idea of where we might end up if we have another one of these storms? I do not know. I, I, perhaps the highway surveyor knows the, the bills. I haven't seen the, the invoices yet. I'm not sure if they've been submitted for the past. So that would be the poorhouse. Uh, that's 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 the poorhouse. We were out again. Last year we expended roughly 284 grand on snow and ice removal. I think. And that's not, you have to also take into account not just your storms, but when the melting starts and then the freezing at night mm -hmm. and that sanding going on, we're yeah. gonna. Yeah, like this week, this weekend, it's gonna be 30 something on Sunday and then drop down to the teens mm -hmm. at night. Yeah. So there'll be. S There's some t spots in town that always need sanding. Yeah. Um, no, I believe um, I believe MEMA has come out with, they're going to do some funding. I think um, the emergency management director said he spoke with you. Uh, yeah, we uh, actually, for the route that we submitted uh, the following Friday, we submitted all our expenditures um, from sand and salt, um, extra hours for our labor, um, contractors' bills. They all got put in for, we picked a, uh, 48 hour window, because that's what they allowed. So we picked that and we put it in. Um, 
actually a name for that now I saw it on the news it's called snow rage I know chief Landry uh, dealt with that last week a little bit so hopefully we will be getting some money back from, from the state too so there's a possibility that we might get something back from the federal if we're declared a disaster area yeah and that could be several weeks before we have any answer Kind of based on the numbers that go into the local FEMA, and then they, they become a national. It's just good that it was called early. You know, Governor Baker called it very early so that y you could cash in on that 48 hours as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. Good. Great. All right. Next, we have the members' forum. We have uh, Mr. Raposa has the highway highway snow and I have the uh, warrant Joe you want to do the, the thing I have on warrants Chris that's going to take 30 seconds sure and then we'll go to the highway sure so what I brought I want the warrants on is just to remind um, the, the board how important it is to hurry up and when when Marsha calls us to sign the warrants just to get the, they got to be done by early a.m. on uh, Wednesdays so that Lisa and Marsha can process all the vendor bills and payroll, which is even more important than the vendors. And um, uh, just so, you know, if, if we can't send out payroll, there'll be some issues. <laughs> you know, the vendors don't mind waiting. Right, Brad? <laughs> 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 but... Uh, Anyway, so just, just to remind us all how important it is to uh, make every effort to get down here and just sign the warrants so that the girls can keep moving. So that was it. Okay, uh, this, uh, my subject is that just hanging around town, being a retired guy, I hear a lot of things from a lot of people, but uh, the, the one concern that I, I do have is the, the instruction or the understanding between highway and, and town government in dealing with snow and ice. What, what are the protocols? Um, it, it appears that there are communication breakdowns or misunderstanding between individuals. And I would really like to see um, you know, a protocol or a procedure established so that we can avoid these, these issues so what is our responsibility is uh, the policy makers of the town versus an elected official you know where's the control where's uh, where's the uh, ICS incident control system command command system <laughs> chief Landry knows all about that yep <laughs> So uh, we spoke with uh, Mr. Malali this, this weekend uh, in one of those tough situations, and uh, and I invite him up if he'd like to, to, to speak a little and see if we can clear up some some misunderstandings. So Brian, you might want to pull the mic over a little bit. Well, I'd just like some clarification. Um, as you all received the same email that I have, um, that there were numerous complaints 
made um, about the uh, town properties and how they're being maintained, um, the snow plowing um, that I oversee. Uh, we have the contractor uh, who is here tonight also, um, who has the snow plowing contract for Millville um, that we do assist him with our town vehicles. Um, a lot of um, questions about what it, here going forward, how we're going to react with the town properties and where are all the complaints? Well, I, I believe uh, part of the confusion is who's, who's responsible for sidewalks and, and doorways, you know, especially emergency egress. I'm, I'm, I, I even, yeah. even if a door is not used, mm -hmm. like these two doors are our main doors, but we have emergency egress doors as well that all need, need shoveled. Correct. Um, and who's responsible? Well, I, uh, the contract says, may well, I see let's, that, let's, may let's, I see that, think, John? I think what yeah. you Back up for a minute here because, well, I, I, I mean, I, I can lay it right out on the right, table. Right, we don't I, have, we do not have the manpower to be maintaining all of the walkways um, consistently, uh, constantly mm -hmm. during a snow event. Oh, I know. Well, during um, a snow event, the town for, hall is normally closed anyway. <laughs> But before Correct, the next but I don't want it to be day. closed because of the highway department. Well, and I don't want it to be, well, be, be said because the highway department Ryan, first line uh, of couldn't, defense. couldn't main, maintain it. Because I think, Chair, first line of defense. Correct. There's three things. Plain and simple. Police department, fire department, town hall, because Mima's in here. Uh, okay? Mm, yep. All right. That's your first line of defense. Okay? Because you've got to have public safety be able to help the people. As long as we get a call soon enough, our first concern is the main arteries, the main that, arteries of Millville. You still got to take care of the first line of defense. And then it Because if the police department way, and fire department you, can't get out, be they're in trouble. It, but have they not been able to get out? Well, I've heard they, they had issues with this not being plowed out, and it was safety issues. Okay, so what I'm saying is, first line of defense, we have to make sure that this is taken care of. Where are the complaints? I'll comment on the Fine, come on. Um, in regards to the police plow in the parking lot in the back, um, Brian has been very receptive when I've called him to plow. But you know what? It's not my job to call him every time the parking lot needs plowing. We went 10 hours last storm on the 27th, and there was six inches or seven inches of snow in the parking lot. So if there's seven inches of snow in the streets, there's seven inches of snow in my parking lot. Now, I understand Brian says we're calling. Well, I can't babysit the police department and fire department 24 7 wondering if they were plowed, especially when I'm not on duty. That's what probably irritates me the most. Sergeant Cooper's spoken to me. He's told me he's made numerous calls in the past as well. That's not our job. It's not my job to make sure the police department or the fire department's lots are plowed. Whether it's the private contractor, or the town trucks. That's between these two gentlemen and not me. Now, Brian will admit, we call Brian. I call Brian and I have to have, but I, it's not my job to call Brian. I'm worried about a fire department and a police department, not the snow. So whatever misconnection we have here going on, it has to stop. Last week, I had a mound of snow in front of the garage door. I thought it was a hazard for police and fire. And what happened? I called the highway surveyor. He refused to come down and remove that snow. After I received an email, I don't not hear. to after I received an email, not to, to touch said, oh, town property. But it doesn't well, matter to me. We can talk, but let it him doesn't finish. matter to me who's sending out emails, who's speaking to somebody, who's communicating with anybody. I worry about public safety. So when the police chief called. And I can't get my lot plowed, I have a problem with that. And that, that didn't make sense. Whatever the disconnect is between these two gentlemen, I should not be a victim of it. And I was. And it, it was so so unprofessional, Brian, for you to tell me, no, I can't. Why do would it. you tell me that when I when you told me you couldn't do it right on the That's phone. right. You received the same email I got. 
But not I'm, to I'm do not it. To and you said to me, you know, right. you're putting I'm, me I in said, a hard spot. I said, I, that's right, I'm in a hard spot between you, mm -hmm. this gentleman in heaven. And it's yeah. not my job to be in this difficult Jesus. spot. I just want the snow plow mm -hmm. from the parking lot without having to call you every time the snow accumulates. And, and, and you're right. And I can see you don't here need to call and see your time. trucks or bride's trucks go by 20, 30 times. You're telling me they can't pull in and make a pass? But I can push my two cruisers because they can't move? I, that doesn't make sense. So whatever disconnect there is, it has to be taken care of. You are 100% because you are 100%. I'm not in the middle of this, but it's not my job to call you and tell you my lot needs to be plowed or Brad or Helen. I'm a police fire chief, mm -hmm. not the highway surveyor. And I don't think it should be my role unless you're going to instruct me to make these phone calls. No, but if you do come in here and you see that it, you know I don't like you, you might need a little more attention. It's only working together and helping each other if you do pick up the phone. We've done that. And you have. And, and, we're not going to, just and that's about working, working together. Right. But when it comes back to, the, I want to go back to the snow piles. You had the email days before. I was told not to. You even told me on the phone. You, you know that you were supposed to call the executive secretary to get it taken care of. I, I right? wanted to do it. I had two front end loaders and two dump trucks, three dump trucks out on the street. This sounds I like kindergarten. To this sounds like kindergarten. When a highway right, you're right, it does. will not come out and be plowing a public safety lot. That wasn't you know, that was that was I could care less about the email. Wait, Alex. Where, where a right. public truck cannot, right. cannot make this you know, true your job. And I, I didn't worry you. about that. I didn't worry about finding these I agreed with you. That's all I'm saying. I want to have say, it I don't want to get it would have been me too. It's not my job to get between highway and Brad. My job is to make sure we can respond to calls mm -hmm. and leave the fire station. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is not and a you, case. you have been able to. When I make the phone call, let's go back to that. When I make the phone calls, is that not true, Brian? Not true. How many times have I called you regarding snow with Sergeant Cooper or called Brad? I've, I've probably had. This no, shouldn't be any. This shouldn't be any calls. If there's ten you inches just agree with me, street, it's, it's working again. I'd like to ask a question. The, outside of these past storms we've had, in previous years, have any of the, has any of this ever been an issue that you know of, Brad, that you know of, that Helen knows of, or the chief? For the past four years, I've gotten phone calls. We all can, can, can you That's come, consistent. Can you can, can you come in and do it? We've moved the cars. Or there's a little more than, uh, we're having a hard time getting up the hill of Fletcher Street. I mean, we, we can't be everywhere at once, but yes, public safety is first. Okay, so a, a second question is, Brad, within, and, and Brian, within our contract, it includes the clearing of town lots. Correct. And do you have like a system or a person on the I, I believe, that? and I have not, we have not been able to sit down yet um, since this has happened. And I believe I have, I have the answer for it, um, and it's not what we have, aside from the sidewalk. Um, but I would like the time to be able to sit down with the contractor, because I do oversee him, and go over it with him and put the game plan together. I'm not happy with working with, I don't want the chief to call me and say, move my pile of snow, and I have to say, Call the executive secretary because you get the same email. Or we're starting to get a blizzard, and I call the chairman of the board of selectmen because I'm trying to get some rest before we go out, and my mind's starting to spin, and I start saying, "Well, how's Helen defining snow removal? Because snow removal can be taken many ways. Is it the removal from the parking lot, or is it, you know, plowing and everything? So are we supposed to be plowing a lot? So I pick up the phone and I call you." You, you were out that night, I went down the line. I called Joe, I got Joe. Joe couldn't answer me because he wasn't sure of the question I was asking. He called Helen as far as I know, called me back, told me by all means, you don't need to touch him for this storm. We will work this out, come to the meeting. And that's what I wanna do. I don't want, you know, if there's a separate contract for the town properties, I don't want to see 
the same contractor putting a truck that's on the road to come in here to build a town hall. I mean, dipping. it's just, it's not going to work that the way. double dipping. It's not, not the double dipping part it's of it. It's in the contract, you're supposed to do it, and then you're going to pay, we're going to pay another outside council. I just don't want to have I don't want to have to police that part of it. Do we well, have on file for the library, the senior center, the town hall, the police, all of our town buildings, do, I know it's in the contract. Do we have from each of those persons in charge of the facility, what does snow removal look like at their building? So the senior center might say, we need this store, this store. Do we have a list of the things that need to be done at each building? Because I think that might be a first step. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, and I've had a, conver I, I've had a conversation with you mm -hmm. um, on the phone about this, and I was, you know, because I, I emailed Helen and said, you know, I think the storms have been precedent setting. And we also have to look at the fact that years passed, the highway did not do it. It came later when I was on the board. We used to have the, the maintenance person who was here and did it in the morning. Mr. Gravel did it. Mr. Height did it at one point. Um, and how things evolved to save money. And then in our conversation, it hit me. Jonathan used to come down and do this. Well, Jonathan is now in a plow truck, which didn't exist four years ago. Right. You know, so Jonathan drove around, sho helped shovel out whatever, did this, did that. Now we're putting them in a truck with a sander and a plow. So the dynamics of the highway has changed. The town's needs have changed because the cost measures. And I think if to work successfully, I think we need a list from each facility, what needs to be done, and then figuring out if it can be done by them or if each person needs, to, uh, they should not have to hire a plow. It's in there, it should no. be done, and that's it. It should be part of the room. But, but as far as a it. shovel, I think we might have to hire someone to be a shovel person to come dig out this, dig out the walkways, mm -hmm. use the snow blowers. I don't know, but I think we need to see yeah. what's needed at each building to even know if we... Well, the issue right now isn't what doors at each building need to be done. They all need to be done. All the sidewalks need to be done. It says right here, all the roads, okay? Town accepted roads, sidewalks, in the town of Millville, as well as various municipal parking lots as determined by the highway surveyor. Well, we're, we're saying it right now. It's every parking lot we own, every sidewalk we own, and every emergency egress door that we own on the, in this town needs to be done. Certain ones need to be done during the storm, throughout the storm, fire, police, and the MEMA. After that, <coughs> the storm's over. Before, you know, we gotta, when we know that the town hall is opening, which unfortunately always snows on a school night, so if we know the town hall needs to open, well, then in the morning, we gotta, we gotta make it safe for these ladies and, and gentlemen to come to work. It just needs to be done. It doesn't make sense to have this contract to do all that, it's spelt out right here, and then hire the same contractor no. as the town hall. The town hall shouldn't have to hire another contractor or the same contractor to do something that he's already, he's basically being paid to do it because he works by the hour. We have a contract of labor and equipment cost per hour mm -hmm. with each different type of equipment. And it's to my understanding that Mr. LaFontaine has a um, quite a, a, a Impressive snow blower. How many times you take that, that out? That he hasn't used. Um, <laughs> and if, if Jonathan can't shovel anymore because he's in the truck, which is fine because that was the intent of having a truck with a snow, with a plow and a sander, yep. um, then if Mr. Lafontaine has to hire another person to operate the snow blower um, to get these thing these issues done and make everything safe. I mean, we got to have safe roads to drive on, but well, there's also pedestrians that need to walk safe. I know in most other towns don't do their sidewalks till the snow's done and the roads are done, but they still need to be done. And um, I would have to say that the town hall opening for business would be the first priority. And then, you know, your senior center and your library. And that's how we've done it. I mean, we, I we, we, do, we do come here at 8 o'clock in the morning, yep. and we we would open up the two main entrances as we would shovel. Um, the town hall was closed the other day. We sent 
and and we have I know Helen has a staff uh, we sent somebody over here to open up the entrances with the shovel um, he got here they were, they were already being done great uh, I drove in one of the town employees to my knowledge Chief Landry drove in the other they were able to access the building the next morning the same thing sent somebody over here at 8 o'clock to start shoveling to open up they were already being done great Brian who was doing them um, you're I don't know what Is she from yeah we've just staff? got we've just got a part-timer here for the next okay. couple Taylor, of weeks no, Taylor was doing it. yeah he's just a, he's just okay. a temporary part-timer but that's just the past couple of that's just the past well, couple well, of no days. I'm just saying no, that, 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 that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. But we would start here at the town hall, yeah. and then we would move on. By all means, I knew the town hall wasn't open on a Friday. We didn't come here Friday morning, 8 o'clock, right. if it was snowing or a Saturday. Right. After the storm, we'd come in. Um, if we were getting that much during the blizzard, we did come in here twice and shoveled the walkways. Um, yeah, but for but I got a phone call. Our understanding, Brian, is that Helen had to ask the contractors. Now we've got to pay him over and beyond. I'm not good with that. Why should we pay him? It's in the contract for him to do it anyway. I, I think, Brad, if you would I, like to come up, I've got a couple of questions for you. All right. Mr. Chairman, this goes back. I don't think we've had any problem the past week because we've had Mr. LaFontaine's crew in, and I've got a temporary kid here who's on break doing some miscellaneous stuff. But going back weeks, to the first snowstorm that we had in January. Um, to my knowledge, none of, the, none of the crew had been here. Um, we came day after day after day to nothing having been shoveled, snow blown, nothing. Um, the secretary herself had to shovel the ramps in order to open the doors. Um, and this went on for weeks. We would place a call, um, in fact, I, I was standing right there on Thursday saying, please by Monday, can you do A, B, C, D? You've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but by Monday when we open, can you please get the walkway done, get the emergency exits done? Um, and we would come Monday and they wouldn't be done. So, you know, as facility manager of the Longfellow Municipal Center of this building, and I'm listening to Chief Landry, you know, with his frustrations and issues that he's facing, um, the oil delivery paths weren't done, the emergency exits to his building weren't done. Um, as a facility manager, both the chief and I are responsible for the staff in our buildings. Right. Um, so when time and time again, the request to clear snow went un unaddressed, I felt there was nothing more that I could do other than reach out to the contractor myself. We, I texted Brian, I emailed Brian, and there were phone calls made to Brian. Chrissy specifically asked Brian, I believe, do you want Helen to find somebody? And his answer was no. It was on that Monday that I came in and nothing had been done that I had asked for okay. since the Thursday before. Right. And nothing and I'm was aware done. Of all this. From yeah. the very first snowstorm till this last one, nothing had been done. And you can you can ask Mr. LaFontaine because he did finally break out that whopper of a of a snow blower and the paths that he had to, to blow were four yeah, yeah, feet the, high. The, the only things that weren't touched and actually the only thing that I know of that wasn't touched was the front walkway. Um, throughout the whole year, and so no. Nope. Yeah, but if <laughs> Helen has to call him and hire yeah. him to do what is in this contract, then as far as I'm concerned, we're paying him twice for the same thing we have a contract for, and that's yeah. unacceptable. All right. So, Mr. Lafontaine, if if you if you're aware, I, mean, I know we got to go over all the doorways and, and walkways that need need done. Because um, in the past years, Jonathan's been doing them. Um, so if we make you aware of all these issues that need to be addressed during, during and after snowstorms, mm -hmm. so that at the opening of the next business day, everything's safe for the, for the you know, residents to come in and out of the town hall. You have the resources, equipment and manpower-wise, to address all this without having to do what we're doing right now. We can, going further. We can get anything done that we need to get done as far as uh, manpower, we have the manpower. The thing is that um, when it comes to shoveling doors and all that, um, okay, I got hired to do that. 
and that's what we're doing now. Right. Uh, before that, we weren't hired to do that, and, and I, I listen to what Brian tells us to do, and that's what we do, you know, uh, as far as shoveling doors and uh, snow blowing. You guys bought your own snow blowers, so you you have your own snow blowers. So we were gonna, we didn't need my super duper snow blower anymore, and that's uh, another thing that we spent fifteen thousand on just for the sidewalks here in this town because I didn't, I never had. Well, are you like are you gonna do the bridge? Well, no, they do the bridge with their snow blowers. That's where the confusion is getting into a little bit. You bought snow blowers to do it. Snow blower. <laughs> well, you had two. Well, so I guess what I'm what I'm getting one? at We've is never had to. if there's school in the morning, if there's school in the morning after a snowstorm, if the snowstorm ends early enough tonight, there's going to be there will be school tomorrow, so to speak. Okay, as an example. So the bridge sidewalk needs to be done. This sidewalk needs to be done by nine. Well, Brian and his crew don't have, is not enough manpower to do those sidewalks, these sidewalks, and maintain the fire and police sidewalks and doorways um, for the opening of business. So if it's just foolish for the town hall to have to pay you to do it. Now, we know you can do it. So it should just be included in each storm that it all gets done. You you have a small storm, Brian's crew can wipe out everything, no problem. Then we don't need you. But, uh, how do you keep assistance. how do you keep somebody on the sideline yeah. when that man thinks he's gonna go out every snowstorm and then all of a sudden you guys are doing it for four storms in a row and this guy's sitting home well, thinking then, so what I do call him finally, he doesn't come out right. because he missed four storms already. Right. So what you're saying is you want to do all the little gravy storms, and then we get a big monster storm. Brad, get out there, get that done tonight. No, I want, I it's want, keep I like want that. it to be clear today that Brad's gonna do the municipal buildings every storm, or Brad's gonna do all the sidewalks every storm, and Brian's guys will do the municipal build buildings. Don't really care who does what uh, sidewalk and who does what I door. We can sit down so long as when the storm's done. And it's the safe. And the town hall yeah. opens and school opens. The kids can walk to the bus stop safe, and the people they, can they come want, in and out of the town hall safe. If we have two snowblowers out there, we have two. But you're going to plan on having it out there every storm. That's what they want. Like, for instance, the bridge. We understand there's two sidewalks on the bridge, one on each side. Pick a side. We know you can't get both. So you got to. Okay, we got one side. At least we don't have the kids, the people walking in the street. You got one side done, one's better than none. You had none done. You just did them. Mm -hmm. That's the point. So you got it, like, for instance, the senior it's, center. We're not it's blaming not, you. It's not a priority. It's something that you know eventually you'll get to. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I'll do whatever I'm told to do. No, it's I know. Like if I'm, uh, you know, the sidewalks haven't been a thing well, with me. How long have you last, been? The last three years, we haven't, we, I think we've done the sidewalks once. Right. So it's not, it hasn't been in my, uh, I think what it comes down to, yeah, I haven't no, been told to do I think what it comes we, down we, to we, is Brian and yourself need to have a conversation on who's going to do what. But like <clears> the chairman said, and I think the rest of the board agrees, just get it done. We don't care how you do it, but just get it done. You can't continue going this way and putting three lines of defense not being done because without that done, we're putting this town in jeopardy. I think that's the point that the board's making. So between you two guys, you'll figure it out. And the next storm, it'll be done right, and we'll move forward, and everybody will be happy. I, I believe two times the town hall was closed two days for the snow because the town hall wasn't shoveled out yet. You know, And I, I don't care whose fault it is. I don't want to know whose fault it is. I'm just stating the facts that it can't happen. Just get out that big red bird That's and it. start throwing it snow. It can't happen. I mean, if you're Brad, telling me I need shovel people in the town, I'll, 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 no, I'll, no, I'll I understand. be there every time. Every so time. I, don't, I never had shovel people in town. Brian, I... The contract I, doesn't say... It says roadways and sidewalks. It doesn't say... It's, wait a minute. I'm just saying... Jennifer, we don't have a facility I'm in engineer agreement. here. We don't have janitors. We don't have anybody. I'm in agreement, but we, we have never to have use a shovel person through... Well, we need to do we it now. It so, and it says on there, yes. as determined by the highways, yes. and it's, it yeah. says yeah. as de walkways. as determined. It says, but I'm 
I know. You're going to start. You're going to start nipping. No, but I'm saying again. we can come to a mutual agreement here and put it Wait in. Wait a minute. I'm just telling you right now. I'm not going to get interrupted anymore. I'm telling you right now. The snow plowing. All right. I know in the past has never been an issue. We're having an issue this year. It doesn't matter. You call it a walkway. You call it a stairway. You call it a handicap ramp. You call it a sidewalk. Call it whatever you want. It needs shoveled at the end of the storm for the next opening of school or and or business. Period. End of story. I don't care what you want to call it. The highway surveyor, all he's got to do is say, Brad, we got to do the ramp and the stairs as well. And Brad will do it. I know Brad. I, Brad, I've worked with Brad for six years as a selectman. I, I remember Brad snow plowing long before I was crazy enough to do this job. Okay? Um, and I know he'll just, your father thought the world of him. I'll have Brad do it. He'll come right out. I know he will. Boom. And Brad does it. He doesn't well, complain. He just said he never had a shovel person, so we need no. to make an agreement here tonight that we can get that done. That's what I'm saying. I agree yeah. with you. Well, but you don't saying, have to I do believe, that, Jennifer. That's Brian's want, job. I believe He'll he do bought it. He'll the snowblower at the request of your father. But Correct? Because I can remember it. John talking about it. So but we need to make sure that we can come to the agreement, as, as I said earlier, yeah. along with a list from each, each of our facilities, managers or directors, to say what they need done so that we can get it to them. So there's no question about what needs to be done. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying, but he just said, he just said, I never had a shovel guy. So yeah. if they have to get out and shovel, he's going to have to make sure that whoever does the town hall might have to get out of the truck and do some shoveling at whatever rate of pay. So. Yeah. We, we need to put that in there. I think the shoveling is very limited. I think most of the work requires a snow blower. And I think having spoken at length with Brad during the week, he's very knowledgeable and well aware of the areas that need to be done. That's what I'm saying. He, he did them for us. They know what to do. They know what their priorities he are. Did them for we seven shouldn't have years to tell them. Without having a problem. In They've fact, doing he pointed it long out enough. to me areas that should have been done that weren't done that I didn't yeah. even think about. So I think, I think he's, Brad he's well aware. Brad but I think too is when you start when you stop thinking Exactly. It gives accountability. Yeah, I think we should just stop right here. Let Brian and Brad do their thing. Do it. They know what they need to do. Let them talk it out. And that's the that's end. It. it just it needs take care it of it. It needs done because you know, I then I get phone calls from people. Why is the town hall closed again? It snowed yesterday. Well, <laughs> you know. Just to, just to get everything clear here, I only came because I heard somebody was going to talk about snow plowing today. So I just came. No, and I'm just, glad you I want to get it straight like everybody else does, and Brian does too. Yep. That's the only reason why I showed up today, because I heard there was going to be talk about snow plowing. Well, when I start hearing I wanted to be here for that you, we got to hire you to do something that you already hired, and then we're going to get an extra well, bill, i got a problem with that. Let's, let's, let's put it this way here. We, we put a, a, a truck in here to do all them. It, it, it comes out to the same thing that we just did, only it's getting paid from different departments. It, whether a truck's in here plowing that, that Brian's got out on the streets, or I put a truck here, well, now that truck on the street doesn't have to do it, so it takes the same amount of time. It's just we had to put a, an, an extra truck in. It, it, but it, it, it would have taken the same amount of time. My other trucks would have just stayed out longer. So there was really no double cost aside of, okay, we cleaned up the sidewalks and stuff like that, you know? So we did spend a little time on that. I have another question, Brian. How is your equipment holding up? Um, we've had some incidences um, with the older truck uh, with wheels. Uh, we had a small incident with the sander just recently. What was that? Um, the shaft got backed into a Jersey barrier down the salt shed. It's you know tight quarters down there, and the guy wasn't paying attention when he backed up, and he bent the chute on the back. Is it fixed now? It's all fixed. Um, I think yeah. Everybody driving our trucks, do they have a DOT physical? Um, everybody, I believe, I don't have that answer. Well, we, we, I mean, we went you, round and round with exactly. this. Well, it's a, wait, let me explain something to you, because it's I a federal law. I understand that. All right, because I need it I for sent, my horse trailer, I need I it sent, for my work truck. I sent, so. and I could go back with emails, but I sent the part-time employees to get their DOT physicals. Yeah. I got an email that went back and forth between Helen and the chief 
this is, goes back probably a year. Um, and there was some question that they didn't need it as long as they stayed within the town parameters. And I think that came from the chief. That came from the chief. So they stay within the town boundaries. They didn't need it. And that's that. That's why I sent, you know, Jonathan, he went and got his. The, um, uh, one of the em employees we had who left, I had sent him for his. Because they go out of town to pick up uh, cold patch. They go to Kimball to pick up material. Yep. Because they're driving outside the town yep. well, they're covered. parameters. I made sure those were covered. Right now, you know, I have a handful of town employees um, that tell me they want to go on the list that I have that I call. Yep. Yes, I do call the ones who are more available mm -hmm. uh, 24 hours a day. But I, you know, I, hey, if they're on the books of the town, yep. come on down. Yeah. I put you on the list. I'll call you sometime. Right. You know, it might not be that frequent, but mm -hmm. and many times I, I go through the list and people aren't available or they're working or they got to go to work or so so you just keep going um obviously jonathan gets first he, he yep. gets first and um right now we've been using um bob laflem a little bit um using a couple uh one of the firemen a little bit um a couple of the past firemen have been in the seat this year uh, uh, I had called on uh, Deputy Chief Ferno a few mornings ago because he had told me he was going to be available over the weekend. A little miscommunication. He had class that morning, but was ready to go in the afternoon, but we were already done. I, you know, I, I, I keep it open okay. to, to town employees because <coughs> it's, it's tough. It's hard to fill one seat now. We're filling two, but we, we're doing it, and we're trying to keep the trucks rolling. So anyway, so Brad, you're you able and willing to whatever you want done. I mean, you just got to let me know. Though. I can't. No, he needs know. to let you know. And right, exactly. He, he needs to let me know what is, we got to do. And is there a line item? I don't have the contract. Anymore. Is there a line item in the contract that shows how much a shovel is worth and a snowblower? We snow don't blower. have no shoveler in there, but we do have the um, the the, uh, the skid steer with the snowblower on it. Yeah, yeah. That I remember. We I do remember. have that in there, but we don't have a shoveler in there because. Um, I'll be honest with you, years ago, if I'd seen John out there shoveling, uh, I used to stop and get out and grab a shovel and shovel it with him so that he wouldn't do it on his own because yeah. he was pretty old and, yeah. you know, I didn't want to see him. But that's the only time I used to shovel here, you know, was if I'd seen mm -hmm. John out there. Jonathan used to do it most of the time, but like you said, he's in a truck, yeah. you know. So, you know, maybe uh, because Jonathan's in a truck, we just, they got overlooked or whatever, I don't know, but. I've never been, I don't have a shoveler in there, but we can put one, yeah. you know. But My I've only never had that. other concern I have, and it's not really a, I know the snowblower went in this year in the contract at a six hour minimum. Do we think we're going to be using it six hours to do everything that we, we have? I'm not, not, I understand why, because he owns a piece of equipment and we haven't used it, but <coughs> I just. Um, well, it's like I said, you'll work, you'll work it out. We will. Yeah. You'll work it out. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming in. I mean, when Helen, you have, you, Brad, you gave Helen the cost of a shovel ago. And, and I did not. It's no. the same. I mean, it's, I, I don't I have just, a separate contract. You know, I, I don't even, contract. you know, All right, well, I didn't even do a bill up for anything that we've done around here or anything. And, uh, you know, I just, yeah. I, I just want it all to work. I'm not yeah. looking to, uh, No, I, I, I know, understand. So as far as that goes, you know, yeah. I just haven't our, done anything. Our concern is to uh, get it straightened out. Our main concern is to make it safe. Yeah. I so believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> that we can sit down and in the next day or two before the next storm and have to straighten mm -hmm. out. Figure it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, another thing that happens sometimes and, and uh, we get the storms like we've had recently in the past and that snow comes down um, overnight two and three inches an hour and you're battling and you can't see from me to you in the truck and you're battling the streets and trying to keep the main roads open and three hours will actually go by and that's nine inches of snow and that's why the, the cops call sometimes because 
you're in a battle, you know, it's like, you know, and then, yeah, okay, so when we send a truck here right away when the cops do call, but sometimes it, it gets overlooked for that reason that well, we're just only, in a battle. It's, it's, it's a battle out here, you know? The first line of defense oh, yeah. gets so, a little precedent yeah. because the fire I understand and police that. Yeah. is number one. But again, like like the chief said, it's not his job to, to, to call correct. us. But and 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 sometimes it takes that call for me to say okay, because I might be up just that hill somewhere and I didn't see the the, the thing. And sometimes if if the if police officers are on duty, a, a courtesy call, right. we send somebody right here as soon as we're called every time. Um, so sometimes um, if it's a pretty heavy storm that if they do call, I mean, it's kind of like a courtesy thing to us too, and we can get in here right away, and you know, it's not done intentional. I know, never took those phone calls as complaints. I got, no. I got them as take it down here and clean it up, and we're all good. But we don't want it to happen all the time where they have to call us either, you know, and we're not gonna get into that, but if, it, if we're in a big storm, uh, sometimes it comes down awful fast, and, and the guy will say, I, I was just there an hour ago. And you go there and there's six inches of snow. I mean, he probably was with the wind blowing and everything else. Sometimes uh, it builds up quick. So you don't realize how fast. So I mean, it, so the skid steer would be a six hour minimum. And not to tell anybody how to you know, manage the, the time on it, but if it's a, if it's a storm that, that doesn't, you know, you're probably only gonna utilize it four hours. Maybe if that skid steer is, is big enough, Maybe they can maintain the, the police department. Well, the reason. Road, well, well, we and do. Then you can leave the bigger trucks out on the road. Well, when we come in here, we usually get around all the handicapped parking and all around. We try to get that whole walkway cleared out where if you're shoveling it, sometimes the shovel puts it against the wall. Where we try to take all that stuff right out of there. And I've never, I've never taken that down here to do sidewalks in eight hours. You can't usually get them all done, whatever you're trying to do. And a lot of times we have to come back the next day. You know, it depends on what you want done. But yeah. so six hour minimum. I mean, I can work around that. Um, if you just want to get certain sidewalks done, we can we can we can work around that. It's just that we were getting called out only on a big storm. So in turn, you know, we, we put a six hour minimum on that yeah. because we got to. You know, it's we're not used to using it, so now we got to get it on a trailer, and we got to get the trailer hooked up to a truck and bring the truck and trailer down here, and then same thing when we go back, and you only use it once a year. Yep. You want to do that for two hours? Nah, you know, no, so, no, I know. I you know, so that's why we put a six-hour minimum in there right. on that. There's right. a lot of work involved. So, I mean, we don't have an issue with equipment. We don't have an issue with manpower. It's just the, uh, the communication. So if we can yeah. straighten out the communication, yeah. the issues should go away. Yeah. Just a point of clarification, Helen. Um, this all gets charged to the same line item, mm -hmm. regardless. It's yeah. not, it's yeah. not an item. Right. 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 So it just that's all. It just doesn't make sense to have Brad have to answer to two people to get to to get one goal done. No, but unfortunately. It, we were in a situation where it wasn't getting done otherwise. No, I know. I and felt I did I understand. not have any other choice. Mm -hmm. Understood. But that's why we, we wanted to meet tonight. And mm -hmm. so hopefully this resolves the, the issue. I think, it, uh, pardon the interruption, I, I think for the municipal center, the police and town government buildings, we need some consistency. Yeah. Um, whether it's maybe the same staff members who address it every time. Yeah. Um, because we, we haven't certainly had the snowfall um, in the past couple of years that we've had this year, so that could be part of the issue. But I know even the past couple of years when the staff members changed, one would forget one thing, they didn't know about another. So I think if there's some consistency with the individual and they are very familiar with what they're doing and what they need to do, I don't think we'll have any issues going I think forward. Brad manages his people that way anyway. It seems like the same two pickup trucks on my street for the last mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Which we, makes we, sense. We've done that. You know, no. we try to keep the same people in all the time in the same section, and uh, yeah. that's that's one of the things we try to do. So the guy knows what he's doing. We have one guy in Alfonso that just does Alfonso. We have two guys on the upper end, two guys on the lower end of Chestnut Hill. You know, so yeah. we definitely try to keep the same people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I I don't think that's out pretty good. I think so. I yeah. I think 
like Helen's saying, I think that's what she's getting at. Yeah. So the bit. guys that came in this week were phenomenal. Or yep. Last week, <coughs> I guess it was. Um, they did everything, and, and then some. The yep. place looks much better. Okay, good. That's great. All right, so. That's it. And my eyes are so red, not, not because I'm crying. It's yeah. I, I caught a welder's flash or something today, so. Oh, you got sand. Eyes. The sand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm going to go home and go to bed. <laughs> Okay. So going here forward, just for clarification that we're going to work this out and we will be back in here maintaining these lots, mm -hmm. um, the police, fire, senior said all the directors will, if they have concerns or questions, I urge them to pick up the phone and call me. Yep. Um, I've stressed it before, if you have an immediate concern or you need an answer or you want to let me know about something that needs attention the telephone is the way to go yep um i can't stress it enough yep uh, and then you, i'm just curious brian when we called you on a thursday and asked to have the facility cleared by monday is there any particular reason why it wasn't done in that period you'd have to pinpoint the time and date and i'd have to back everything i don't reckon i don't remember that happening um I think what we need to do. I, I, I just I don't know what the timing date was. The storm. Uh, I, I know I got a phone call on a Friday. Somebody had a hard time getting in here on a Friday, and I was, well, <laughs> I didn't realize someone was going to be in the building. Yeah. You know, and when I left on a Thursday afternoon, handing in bills, it was clear. Yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of Fridays though, Lisa and and Helen are here. You know, well, so I, they, you know, Lisa and Helen and and Marsha, yeah. all work almost. Uh, so you five want days you, you, so. you you know, even on the the weekends you want to prioritize all these doors at all at all times. Well, Saturday, Sunday during a storm, the main door for this building I would say would be the MEMA door, yeah. but before the opening of business, you know, all the doors. Right, and that's how I would address a Friday. I mean, the town, right. they're closed. That's why, you know, it, it, not knowing. I don't know, so maybe this handicap yeah. ramp. Well, I'm just, I, I want to. And the MEMA door. We're, we're going to work this out, but I just want to clarify. Yeah. What kind of time and effort. Because, you know. Because yeah. Monday through it. Friday. And then sure, some committees actually will come in during I know, Friday. I come in here on the weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's best time to. Yeah. Do work because you don't get exactly three thousand questions. Right. So uh, uh, so I mean you know what the needs are of the town, so and so if you and Brad just communicate all the you know, who's gonna do what and that's it. And I know it'll happen. So. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Yep, thank, thank you. you. I got I the members form i like to bring something up sure. um, a while back we had a gentleman here looking to get a license well, next to the, the uh, men's club he had a oh mark mark's mark's auto right mm -hmm. mark fernandez right he never got his license right right mm -hmm. why has he got 15 cars in there and half of them aren't even registered can somebody look into that? I drove by the other day and I noticed the same thing and I thought that falls onto the purview of our building inspector. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to bring it in front and, of the board. Um, yeah. I just didn't want to, you know. You know how yeah, long our building inspector is going to be with us. <laughs> right. Well, technically if the if if the business is no if the property is no longer a business, then he's only allowed one unregistered vehicle. Right? It's basically a residence. Is, so what is, I'm saying is, there is a lot. He, oh, I know there is. He hasn't yeah. stopped doing what he was doing. He just kind of put blind and just he does whatever he wants. So I'm bringing it in front of the board to find out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You, you want to come up here, so please? Knowledge about this. I did speak to Lisa Fernandez about when? a month ago. Okay. She's under the impression he has one license that allows him to do some things, and the other license doesn't. When that? When we never was, signed. When did that come about? We and never he, signed I'm his. About it and yeah. He, he's still working there. Is it the license to maintain the cars? Or okay. My, my next question to you is. Yeah, he can do that. Yeah, he can do that. He has. 
one license to repair cars, which I think you think to engage was fall under that license, but the other license were not legitimately received. To sell used cars. To sell used cars. cars. But does that mean his license that he's, he has right now, that means he can have all those unregistered? I, I have no idea about that. That's what I'm asking. I'm just saying, when not I if speak about repair. the cars, I think that's what the I whole issue was. Not if it's repair, though. He said he had one license. Did we sign anything in December well, on him? They, they don't need a license don't. for auto body. Yeah. It's just a business certificate. Right. And that was pre the... the what I'd like to know is his business certificate, which allows him yep. to do that. And that was grandfathered in. The planning board met and discussed that. He right. can do that. It was the class two license, which is the sale of used automobile, automobiles that he cannot. I was just wondering if he's allowed to have that many unregistered Because isn't Zeno's limited to the amount of vehicles yep. unregistered on, on the lot? On property, isn't it? On property. How many, and how many unregistered? Unregistered. I that mean, would be a question for the planning board. It yeah. must be by special permit. Because I so. thought when Mr. Zeno came here that for his certificate, there was he, he could only have a certain amount of vehicles um, on he the doesn't lot. have a class two though. No, he's got the repair, which is right. the same as. But that Mr. doesn't Fernandez. come before the board. Um, he was here for. He something. was here because his neighbors here. behind him came in. Yeah. To vouch for him. Yeah, because his neighbors came in and vouched for him right, for a but hearing. Right, then that, that class two certificate was revoked. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. But I remember. Got to be some guidelines. Yeah, there, there's got to be That's something. What I thought. I remember talking about it, and yeah. I, I don't know. So that's a question for the planning, planning board. Planning board. To, uh, <laughs> so a lot of absolutely correct. It looks like a junkyard over there. It does. I, I, I pity, I it pity nice the poor now, guy behind him. It's covered in white snow. Yeah, yeah but, but it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, but the poor guy behind him has always had an issue with him. Yeah. I feel bad for the guy, but the thing is, is we can't continue letting this guy do whatever he feels like no. doing. I mean, so that's why I'm bringing it up in front of the board if there is a violation. Okay, we'll check with the planning board on that to see if they have anything specific that property. That's all I have. Is there, is there um, if there isn't, is there something that we can do as a bylaw to look into for May? I mean, well, that'd be a question for the planning board too. Not, not <laughs> that, not that it's going to solve the ones that are sitting there, yeah. but at least it can going help forward. going yeah. forward. Yeah. Especially we just got, you know, zone businesses and things of that sort. Well, you might run into this problem a lot. Was there another guy down in, uh, I don't know which street it is, by the uh, elementary school? Yep. Mm -hmm. He probably got 15 trucks, 10 wheels, everything in his yard. And he's running a freaking regular business over there. And, Milk Street. And yeah. That, yeah, I don't, I don't no, know. I, I, yeah, but I just where talked. Is that, where does that stand? The building I mean, commissioner is aware. I just talked to the building commissioner about that last Wednesday night. and. Um, there's, there's nothing, he's been there since the 70s. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's right. Okay, whatever, I'm just. That's all he said. I think if you talk to the neighbors, they might be able to shed some light on him and yeah. in re regards to land and what used to be there and what is there and, and things of that sort. But um, that is then again asking the neighbors information to come forth. Um, yeah. But the building commissioner went and talked to him, and he said he didn't have a, an issue with the gentleman. Yeah. But that's something we need to, especially now that we have our business areas. But mm -hmm. anyway, so to. that was his first meeting with him, and, but there could be more to come, you know. So, so he's looking into that right now anyway. Yeah. That's why I brought this one up over here, because I just think, it looks like a junkyard. The poor guy behind it has come in front of this board and complained about yep. how bad it is. And uh, it looks like he's going back to his old ways again. I just I, I just can't see it just go away. I, I think we should do something. That's why I brought it up. Mr. Chairman, I just yes. have one quick thing that I overlooked earlier. Yep. And that is uh, several, maybe weeks now ago, uh, MMA sent out a legislative package Yep. that the towns might be interested in, in, in following. Um, one of them is veterans payment. There, there, there's a, a house uh, bill uh, to shift payment uh, to veterans. Instead of the town paying directly, the, the, the Commonwealth will pay directly. Um, 
but that would, that's probably of interest to Mr. Barber. But marketing prioritization uh, development of sites. We, we, we're talking about um, economic development in the town. And the state is looking to create a searchable uh, database for developable land and vacant sites. And they will list them at their cost. And that's probably something that the planning board uh, might follow up on. Uh, if you want to uh, you know, get some recognition for what we might have available. Um, another thing is the there's another MMA bill uh, to provide funding uh, or other opportunities for such technical assistance to municipalities or regions to maximize opportunities for economic development, planning, and growth. Um, and they're going to try to fashion this around the, the Green Communities Program as well, the way that works. So I think it'd be well, uh, well worthwhile to talk to our rep and senator at some point collectively on these uh, development points. Is there one more? That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So next we have public forum for final public. All right. So our, our next regular meeting is March 2nd at 7 p.m., but we'll have a 6.30 meeting um, with the building uh, committee. So at 6.30, and Mr. Chairman, anybody would like to attend? Initially, the 6.30 meeting tonight to discuss priorities. I do think we have yeah. some other priorities that need to be addressed. Did you want to schedule a, another meeting um, to address those? Financial, uh, there were more budgetary and yeah. items for the budget. Yeah, and I thought the fire contract we were supposed to meet too. That wasn't on this. Mm. We brought it up at our I last haven't, meeting. I need to... I haven't even been able to get in touch with, we have a new agent and he hasn't okay. returned my phone call. So oh, I'm kind right. of just holding off on that until I hear from him. Okay. To see if he's got a proposal um, coming here or if the board's well, gonna. Unless we, uh, on March 2nd, would it be possible to meet at six? I'm here at 6.30. We're already here at 6.30. And half of the building committee is finance committee. Can we do six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Six on March 2nd. Are we good with the planning board going forward? Um, they will likely be on at 7, but I'll check with the secretary to see if that's still required. I know they made some headway, I think, with the issue that they were having. So. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So next we'll have um, signatures. We'll do our signatures, and then we'll... Adjourn immediately following. Keyboard in their file cabinet. Oh, I'll look when I do. Mr. Chairman, mission. Uh, mission. Oh, shit. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I'll yeah. second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mission, how are you, Joe? I'll look when I get home. <laughs>